Hello, my name is Matt Simmons and I'm the Programme Lead for Biomedical Science here at the University of Lincoln and we're really passionate about training the next generation of healthcare professionals and scientists in looking at how we both diagnose disease, how we treat disease and ultimately in the future hopefully prevent people from getting these different illnesses. Over the last 20 years I've also worked as a researcher looking at trying to understand how changes in our DNA can impact genes in the body which then have an impact upon different diseases and hopefully using this information to better understand how that disease happens and also to try and produce better treatments for that disease as well. Hopefully this gives you an idea of why you're learning about all these different features about genetics genome editing and other features in your A-levels and understand how we as researchers are able to now be able to take this forward to really improve treatment for pe different people with diseases. Now, interestingly, researchers across the world have always been fascinated by DNA. We tend to look at people who, are, who haven't got the disease compared to people that do have the disease and look if there are any changes within genes or within the DNA itself and try and then determine if those changes could be linked to disease and then what does that help us look at treatments? Now, more recently, new technology has been developed where you can do things like gene editing. So now not only can we just look at the genes, understand the pathways, we also have the opportunity to go in and edit those genes, improve the situation, and hopefully either treat the disease or in the future prevent it. Now, the idea of looking at genetics is not a novel thing. People have been looking since the 1950s and 60s trying to work out if people with disease are more likely to have a certain variation or change in their DNA compared to those without. Now these changes can range from everything from large deletions or insertions or changes within the genes or can even just be very minor changes. So we know the sequence is composed of A, G, T, C and actually it can just be as simple as sometimes in a really key point in the gene that you move an A to a T can have a massive effect on that gene, effect on pathways, and then effect on health. This has been particularly successful up until the 2000s for particularly for single gene disorders. This is where one gene is changed or altered and has a big impact upon disease. Some good examples of things around the veins of Down syndrome and also around the veins of sort of cystic fibrosis where a gene in the lung is mutated and things change. However, most diseases where they have a genetic component tend to be due to a combination of lots of different genetic variation across a series of genes and a series of environmental factors. So you might think that environmental factors are really easy to look at. And you're right that people have looked at things from everything from stress, due to pregnancy, um, due to chemical intake, lots of features. But this is particularly challenging to map across a lifetime, particularly in diseases that may occur in your 40s, 50s and 60s. Getting a virus at the age of 20 is difficult to then predict how much that has an impact 30 years down the line. So as such, many people have focused around genetics and trying to look at how changes in our DNA can predict disease. Now, up until the beginning of the 2000s, a few different genes have been found for many of these complex diseases. And this has been to an element successful. And particularly, they used a series of techniques that you'll be learning about, such as around DNA amplification, and then you'll run electrophoresis, running those out. And what this technique enables you to do is to bring in a series of primers around a gene of interest. And then within that gene of interest, you can then look to see, is the fragment you're amplifying could become bigger, so there's an insertion smaller than you think, or simply you could also add in things called restriction enzymes to cut a very specific small variant to tell you, well, actually there's a T at that part of the sequence or there's an A, which may impact the gene. So this has been successful to an element into up to the few thousands, but there were challenges with this. We didn't have a complete map of the human DNA, which was really challenging to, to begin with. And as much as DNA PCR techniques are good, they can be quite long winded. So two breakthroughs in the 2000s really supported us moving ahead. One was that after 13 years of effort in 2003, the Human Genome Project was published. This gave us a roadmap of all the genes we should expect to see in the body, all the how the DNA should be seen, and also how commonly we should see variation. And the idea being is if we know how commonly we should see it, if we all of a sudden see that variant much more frequently in those with disease, suggests something that linking that to your disease. Also, other changes have happened to our techniques in that we can now sequence much more quickly. We can do um, additional fluorescence-based genotyping. So very similar to the PCR you see, but instead what happens is you get your primers as normal and instead fluorescent probes are added. And this means that these can be detected by computer much quicker. And again, this enables us to screen more genes and different variation. 
And interestingly, we've managed to go since that discovery in 2003 of knowing about maybe two or three genes for certain complex diseases, we now know 50, 60, 70, and in some diseases, over 100 different genes. Now, while you might say this is a brilliant achievement, and it is, there's challenges there of, well, how do we use this information? And particularly, some of the new developments around gene editing may give us some insights. Now, gene editing is a really new tool that's only been around the last, say, 20 odd years and only really started to come into practice within, say, the last 10. It's not available yet currently, but it's being trialled by lots of places. Gene therapy has been around for between 15 to 10 years. And again, it's something that's currently being trialled in lots of places. And it gives you the opportunity to go in and repair or change part of the DNA. So very similarly, you have primers that come in, they detect a specific place, and then you use what we call these endonucleases, which effectively like a series of molecular scissors, which can come in and either remove an insertion, they can cause a deletion of something that might be causing a problem, or just simply change a base pair back if we know that base pair is problematic, change it to something that isn't. Now this technology is already being trialled and has shown some success in clinical trials, particularly a young girl with leukaemia who they believe they couldn't treat, has already been successfully undergone some clinical trials on this and she was treated. However, it's really important before this technology is used in the wider field to really appreciate the challenges with this. So although it's really good that we can treat disease and we might in the future be able to prevent it, you also have to think about the, um, the other implications around the thing that this technology could also be used in designer babies. So you might say that the ability to just change somebody's hair color, height, maybe you wouldn't see that as too much of a problem. But then if you start to do gender selection, you start to go muscle selection, lots of issues can come. The other thing we also have to be mindful of is that we have to be careful what we class as a disease. Because some people may go, things like autism have a genetic predisposition. And do we class those as a disease? Do people have autism, who have Down syndrome? Do they need to be fixed? And many people would say no. So it's really important that we look at these technologies that are coming use them to really help disease, but also think about this. Also, from nowadays, what used to take 13 years to sequence your whole genome now takes three days. It's really brilliant that we have all these new technologies and we have these new ways of being able to look at our genetics and being able to edit it. But it's really important that we think about the ethics associated, about the control of these technologies, and make sure this is all really safely achieved as we move forward. I'd like to thank you all for your time today, and thank you for listening to me. Thank you.